Good morning, dear friends in Christ, on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost, October 18th. And this morning we read from Matthew's Gospel in chapter 22, and we see the Pharisees trying to entrap Jesus with something that seems like a simple question. They ask Jesus, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And though it's a simple question once again on its surface, it's really a question that did not possess a good answer either way. And yet Jesus, being as wise as he is, turns the tables on these Pharisees by showing them their hypocrisy. He asks for a coin which the Pharisees clearly possessed. They had no trouble having Roman money. And the coin stated that Caesar was divine, thus showing their idolatry. Jesus answers to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. And so this morning we're going to explore these two kingdoms, the kingdom of the left and the kingdom of the right, but knowing that there is truly only one king. And so that's the focus of our worship this morning. If you would like to follow along with our service, you may do so by grabbing a hymnal and turning to page 260 for the service of prayer and preaching. Otherwise, just feel free to listen and follow along. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know, to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become thy salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings to open doors before him, that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know. From the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord, who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. 
because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then. What you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Dear friends, we join together in our confession of our one Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, our gospel text shows Jesus being challenged by the Pharisees. And Matthew shares with us. He says, Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, 
We know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought to him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Now, how many of you have ever been asked a question in which there seemed to be no easy answer? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Could God create a rock that he himself could not lift? Why do people say they slept like a baby when babies wake up every two hours? If the professor on Gilligan's Island can make a radio out of a coconut, why can't he fix a hole in the boat? If Jimmy cracks corn and no one cares, why is there a song about it? Now, these are all silly questions, of course, but they are questions in which there appears to be no real answer. And sometimes questions like these are not asked for the sake of curiosity, but in order to trap someone in their words. Now, some of you may have heard questions like this. Honey, does this dress make me look fat? I know many of you husbands have probably heard that before. And of course, the right answer to that question is, no, honey, you look great. But whether that's true is another story. But in our gospel text, there's a very specific question asked for a very specific reason. A question that is actually very relevant for us in our modern world. Tell us what you think, Jesus. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? This is not an innocent question. It is a question with the intent of trapping Jesus in his own words so that the Pharisees can arrest Jesus and bring charges against him. If Jesus answers yes to their question, saying it is lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, then the Pharisees would use that answer to turn the people against him. See, this man is a Roman sympathizer. He's nothing more than a tax collector. Jesus' authority among the people would be called into question by the Jews. But then if Jesus answers no, then the Pharisees can say, Jesus is a zealot, a terrorist. He's trying to overthrow Caesar. He's a danger to Roman political authority. You must kill him before he leads the people into revolt. This is what we call a loaded question. One that could explode in Jesus' face. It's intended to bring about Jesus' demise. In many ways, there are similar questions that are being asked now of the church by outside forces trying to trap the church in its answer. Where do you churches stand on this issue or that issue? And who has the authority to say what's right or wrong in this country? And if we answer that we stand on the side of God's word and we renounce the sinful desires of culture, they claim that we are bigots, that we are unloving, that we are disloyal to the constitution of our country that we are narrow-minded, or whatever other insult you can think of. But if we answer that we side with culture, then we are confessing that we are no longer obedient to God's word. That God's word is no longer the final authority on these issues, and that our country comes before our God. Either answer presents a challenge. Are we loyal to our country and its laws, or are we loyal to God and his law? It's very similar to the question asked of Jesus. And like Jesus, we must answer wisely. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. But when answering this question, we must recognize the relationship between the two authorities. Martin Luther, when preaching on this text, developed a way of talking about it in terms of two kingdoms. 
the kingdom of the left, which is the civil or earthly realm, and the kingdom of the right, which is God's heavenly kingdom, the invisible church. And the two kingdoms can be summarized this way. God gave us the kingdom of the left for our protection, to uphold just laws and to deal with civil matters in a fair manner. God allows kings and princes to rule as his representatives, but they are only representing him insofar as they submit themselves to God's law. Once they step over God's law and command unjust things to be the law of the land, they cease to be his representatives of his will. But the kingdom of the right is not concerned with earthly matters. Instead, it's concerned with God's law and gospel. The kingdom of the right is concerned with the spiritual matters of the heart. The proclamation of God's authoritative word, which brings sinners into a right relationship with God. It deals with matters of forgiveness, repentance, mercy, and grace. And God grants pastors the authority to speak the words of forgiveness by granting them the office of the keys, authorizing them to be his representatives as long as they obey his word and will. This is similar to how Jesus answers the question posed by the Pharisees. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. There are two kingdoms, but only one king. Caesar, in fact, is really acting as a representative of God in terms of keeping the peace and protecting the people. To Caesar belong all things that God has given him, but to God belongs all things. In other words, go ahead, give your taxes to Caesar, but give your devotion to God. Jesus is no fool. He knew the hatred and malice in the Pharisees' hearts, and he was fully prepared to answer their question. Answering everything with boldness and confidence using God's word and teaching, he reminds us that God is God of all. They were searching for just one little word so that they could nail Jesus to the cross. Just give us one little word and we've got him. But even when victory seemed to be right in their grasp, Jesus turned the tables on them. Jesus asks them for a coin. And they take out a coin with Caesar's face on it. This revealed that these hypocrites who hate the Romans had no problem with Roman money. They didn't seem to mind carrying around coins that contained the inscription that Caesar was the divine son of Augustus. These Ancient coins were inscribed with the claim that Caesar was a god. So the fact that they had this coin revealed that they already acknowledged Caesar as their ruler. If it was such a problem for them, why did they carry the coin? Likewise, as many times as the church has been challenged, it too is still standing. Our foundation is unshaken, unwavering. We constantly face that same malice and hatred from the world head on with absolute confidence in God's authority and word. God has given us that firm foundation in his son, Jesus Christ. He is in control of every situation. Jesus was not going to be tripped up by a silly question. When it was his time to die on the cross, he would do it of his own free will. Even when Satan seems to be on the verge of winning, Jesus comes and he steals that victory away. Even when the best traps have been set, Jesus fearlessly overcomes them. Not even death on the cross could hold him as he burst forth from the tomb on Easter morning. It may have been a trap set by Satan, but it is a sure victory through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. How many times we are attacked for our faith or if people try to trap us because we already have victory in Jesus. There is nothing anyone can do or say that can tear us away from that victory. Satan can set all the traps he wants. He can ask any question he desires, but the result will always be the same. God's church will not be overthrown or moved. His kingdom of the right cannot be overcome by those in the kingdom of the left. 
There is only one king who has all authority in heaven and on earth, and that is Jesus Christ. When the world seeks to trap us in our answers, we rely not on our own wit or wisdom, but on God's firm word. Though Satan and his minions would try through earthly powers to destroy God's people, nothing can overcome the gospel of Jesus Christ. Though man would seek to question God and his authority, we know that it cannot be done. Though we face persecution and threats from all sides in this world, we find peace, mercy, forgiveness, and grace in God's heavenly kingdom. When faced with these impossible questions, we can answer as the apostles before us who said in Acts 5.29, we must obey God rather than men. But we also peacefully submit to legitimate earthly authorities, knowing that God is the one who is in control. As St. Paul says in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, he says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. We as Christians must obey God. And we must obey earthly authorities insofar as they are acting on God's behalf. But we do not put our faith in human kings or princes or presidents or monarchs because they can fail. Rather, we place our faith in the one true king who reigns over heaven and earth, Jesus Christ our Lord. So rejoice, my friends, because Christ not only won this brief battle against the Pharisees, but he also won the war against Satan. From Satan, sin, and even more through his death on the cross. So stand firm in God's word. And do not panic when the world tries to trap you. For Christ has already overcome the world. May we rest peacefully in God's kingdom, trusting in the King of Kings. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, dear friends, if you would like to submit your offering to the church, you can mail your offering to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 35, Eagle Bend, Minnesota, or to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Clarissa, Minnesota, P.O. Box 425. Or you can just go online to eaglevalleylcms.org. Click on our donate page and you can set up a one-time gift or recurring gift. Um, and it's totally up to you. And as always, we pray for your continued care, that God would provide everything you need for this daily life for you and your family. Dear friends in Christ, let us go to our Lord in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of divine peace and a pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this nation, for our cities and communities and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters in the care centers, those who are high risk and are unable to worship with us due to COVID-19, for an end to this current pand pandemic, for peace among all people, for our communities and nation to be united by the peace of Christ, for those who are currently being treated for medical issues, for Joanne and Dwayne Bartles, as they continue to recover from their recent illness, for our brother Ken Drevlo, who is currently hospitalized, for God's comfort for his wife, Kathy, and his family who were unable to be with him at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through the things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends, just want to share with you a few announcements here. Uh, we do have our special service for high-risk members. Uh, the next one will be November 1st at 12 o'clock over at St. Matthew's. Once again, we do require masks for that service to keep everyone safe. Uh, we also provide communion for that service, and we do take extra precautions to make sure everything is sanitized and safe. So if you've been concerned, this is a perfect service for you to start coming back to church. Uh, we will continue to provide this for the first and third Sunday of each month uh, as long as we need to. And so I invite you to take advantage of it um, and, and use this service to feed your soul. Also coming up, a confirmation class will be this Sunday from 3 to 4.30 over at Emmanuel. Uh, once again, all the information for memory work and memory work aids can be found on our church's website. Just go to eaglevalleylcms.org, click on the More tab, and then click on Confirmation Resources, and everything you need should be online for you. Uh, confirmation rehearsal is this Saturday, October 24th at 12 o'clock here at Emmanuel. Uh, this is for both students. And then we will be having our confirmation service October 25th at both congregations. Uh, so please be aware of that. And also, I apologize if I wasn't be able to speak as clearly or you weren't able to understand me as well this morning. I did just have a crown put in yesterday, so my jaw's a little sore and I've been having a little trouble uh, enunciating my words, so I apologize for that. Uh, but I pray that this service was a benefit to you and that uh, we can rejoice knowing that we are in God's kingdom and that there is only one king in charge. So we take comfort in that. So dear friends in Christ, I pray that God would continue to bless each and every one of you, that he would keep you safe and healthy, uh, bring you back to God's house whenever it's safe for you, and we hope to see you soon. So go in God's peace. Amen. <laughs>